Temporary Book Launch Ceremony of the Temperament of Nepal University. My name is Li Zhi, and I'm very honored to be the host of this ceremony. First of all, I would like to introduce our distinguished guests. They are Dili Mala. Oh. Suram Badia. The coordinator of uh, Wild Play Nibou, uh, Visit Nibou Year 2020. And Mr. Bara Sabedi, the joint. Uh, we sec uh, secretary and Minister of Cultural Tourism and Innovation. And Mr. Jara Sakia, CEO of KGH Group. And Dr. Prabod Jaswa, Faculty of Department of the International Relations at Tri Tribune University. And Mr. Dilimala, pre advisor of Speaker of the Parliament. <laughs> and Shen Xinyi, who is the China Nibou Cultural Exchange Association. Uh, uh, the president of the Cultural Nepal, uh, China Nepal Cultural Associ Exchange Association in Tsinghua University, and also one of the author of the book. And now, let's welcome him, Shi, to give the opening speech of the ceremony. Welcome. Respected Suranji and uh, respected uh, Barak Subedi and uh, distinguished uh, uh, Rajan Sakya and uh, Dili Mala, also Dr. Pramod Jaswa, and uh, distinguished guests, uh, dear students, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. So firstly, I'd like to extend my warmest welcome to all of you. Thank you all to attend our ceremony today. Thank you so much. So, um, like, I can speak a little bit Nepali, so Namaste, Meidonam Bimola Ho, Mo Tsinghua Bisho Bidalayama, um, China Nepal Cultural Exchange Association Guo President Ho. Hazur Hazura Yi. Petna Bauda Teri Kushila Ke Gotok. So, like, um, I'd like to tell like three short stories about our book. So, let me like firstly introduce my first encounter with Nepal. It is six years ago. When I entered Communication University to study Nepali language, and after that I feel that Nepal has become part of my life. And uh, like we are the first uh, Nepal-focused China Nepal Cultural Exchange Association here at Tsinghua University. And uh, our group visited Nepal under the guidance of Professor Hu Yu last year for a 10 days visit. Now after that, we returned to China and wrote this book. This is a book about Nepalese people, Nepalese culture. We wrote about the nature and uh, the glory, the, the bravery of Nepalese people and Nepalese culture. Um, so, I'm very happy and very honored that this book has been published these days. And uh, so as for this book, 
I like to tell like three anecdotes. The firstly is about um, like my mate with Mr. Mahara, and also our press uh, advisor of Mr. Mahara, Dilip Mala. Um, so Mr. Mahara wrote the preface for our book. So um, he, I think, uh, he really like care about this book. He speak speak highly of the book. He said that this book can be a very successful book for Chinese people to learn more about Nepal. And uh, so um, yesterday morning, I met him again. You know, second time here in his residence. Like he he told me that. I met Chinese ambassador, the new ambassador Hou Yanqi, a few days ago. I also talked with the ambassador about this book. You know, he thinks that this book has been a, like a milestone for China Nepal cultural exchange. Because it is the first book written by Chinese youth about Nepal. And uh, like the second book is, the second story is about like finding Nepalese proverbs. Um, if you open the book, you can find that there are so many Nepalese proverbs here. Um, it's you know it's very difficult to find because um, there are like less than ten Nepalese proverbs have known the Chinese meaning. So I asked so many my Nepalese friends. Um, you know, some of them even don't understand that Nepali proverbs. So it's really uh, difficult. You know, they, they just um, ask their parents, so what does this proverb mean? And you know, through like this communication, I find that there are many similarities between our culture. Such as there is a proverb in Nepali called Lasa go sunma, meiro gan buzo. I think you can understand that, right? It means that um, so Lhasa is rich in gold, and but we don't have gold to wear in our like ears and like. Uh, so um, when I heard about this proverb, I think it's I can't understand what does it mean, Lhasa and uh, gold, and also you know my my Nepalese friends they don't know some of them have no idea about the meaning. So we just, um, after discussion, we figure out that this means that like, um, like become distant relative is not as good as like uh, uh, your neighbors, your near neighbors. So that, I think it's very, really good because we, China and Nepal, are neighboring countries. This proverb, I like this proverb very much because it represents our like our relationship, our friendship. And uh, so here I also want to like thank all of my Nepalese friends, you know, they have helped a lot for me to write this book. And the third one happened like, or just now, you know, you guys have made this opening ceremony happen. So I really want to like thank you all again for attending this ceremony. Um, so, like, um, as you have seen that, uh, we have established the China Nepal Cultural Exchange Association at Tsinghua University, and we hope that this association can do more between our two countries. Just as we know that um, our future looks brighter provided that we tap the opportunity around us. And our future is interconnected. Therefore, let us collaborate for common prosperity. Youth must be aware of it. So, um, no matter we are like Chinese youth and Nepalese youth, both of us should work together to help build, um, create uh, a like a community for shared future. So, thank you again, and uh, hope you will enjoy the book and like it. Thank you. I'm more excited because Nepal is taking tourism as a very, very important year. 
the very fact that uh, Sex is here gives me the confidence that this is the right way to move forward. Uh, China is very important for Nepal, not just for tourism. Uh, I think our history, our culture, in many ways is the same. Uh, my mother actually comes from Nanche Bazar, which is the north of Nepal. And probably the way she eats food is not with her fingers, she eats her food with chopstick. That's something that Chinese do. Uh, she has a lot of noodles. That's what you eat in Sichuan province. So our culture is very, very close. It's extremely important that we grow this for mutual benefit and in very good understanding. Uh, in 2020, we are trying to promote uh, tourism. Uh, and I tell people we're promoting tourism not as an event. It is not a holiday just thing. It is more than that for us. Uh, 2020 is going to be the five years of the earthquake that we had on April. And uh, it is important to remember how powerful nature is, how we must respect nature. And not only that, also to tell the world that five years ago, all the destruction we had, Nepal is coming back strong. Because many people in the world feel Nepal is still under earthquake. Nepal is still a dangerous place to go. So we want to tell our friends that Nepal has moved beyond that. Okay, so this is one. Two, Nepal has transformed tremendously. And I think something we're very proud of, Nepalese people are not proud because we, I think, expect much more. But I personally feel we're very proud, and I'm very proud of, is we had three elections in one year. In regards to tourism or in regards to any other aspect, we need to give the information to the Chinese people about us, about who we are, about what we are. I'm mean, like, if you really look at the relationship between Nepal and China, it goes back literally millions of years ago. Because the city that we are living in right now, is supposedly created by a Chinese god, Wen Shu, mm -hmm. in Wu Tai Shan Mountain. Mm -hmm. And when I go to China, and when I tell them about the relationship between Nepal and China, even the Chinese people don't know about it. And look at the history that we have. Of course, Arunipo is maybe about 900 years old, but we had history that the creation of Kathmandu was done by a Chinese god. Flying over from Wu Tai Shan Mountain, landed up in Soyingu Stupa, and that is where he sat down and meditated. And he said, this is one of the most beautiful places in the world, and I think people should live. Therefore, taking out his sword and cutting the mountain to create the valley. And this kind of history that we have between the two countries, and we are not able to tell. And I think that is uh, a lot of information needs to be told to the Chinese people, because the relationship is always there, already there. And, uh, if you can tell more about this, then, the, then there's more curiosity. Anybody wants to go to a new place, why? Because they're curious about it. They want to see something different. They want to learn something different. And if you can create that curiosity amongst the Chinese people, then that two million is not that big of a figure, really. We can go for five million or 10 million, or whatever it is. So it's just that I think Previously, we've not done enough homework, and I think we need to do so. And I think, I really feel that uh, Suresh Bhaiti is the right person. In Nepal, we've always had a problem. We've always had the wrong people at the wrong time. But this time, maybe we have the right person at the right time, who understands the dynamic of Nepal and China relationships, who understands the dynamic of the present day situation and what needs to be done. And a lot of people have hopes, and of course, we are working hard together as well. Was this. The book talks about the travel queue, but in order to make it interesting, there are interesting observations. But the book talks about the culture of Nepal, the history of Nepal, history of Nepal only not the political history, also the history of Nepal China relations. So it's a complete book which has uh, economic aspects are there, there are political issues are there, culture is there, all kind of aspects like if you want to know about Nepali cinema, Nepali music, everything is there. So it's a complete, comprehensive book. And I think because of that, uh, I think the book will contribute a lot uh, in Visit Nepal 2020. I think it will be a guide to all the Chinese travelers 
if, uh, I think if whoever reads the book, I think it will encourage them, it will provoke them to visit Nepal. In fact, when I read this book, I enjoyed a lot because I was traveling around Nepal, which I have really traveled with the author. So I really enjoyed the book reading. Uh, let me try to feel some interest. Many of you might not have read the book. So my, you might be questioning, you might be wondering why should I read this book? I think you should read this book because the book contains all about Nepal's culture, history, economic, religious aspects, cinema that I've talked about. Second, if you want to understand the geopolitics of Nepal, Nepal, India, Nepal, China, I think you should also uh, read this book. The book also talks about sensitive and very less known issues like Madhya's blockade, which not many in China knows that. And the authors have dared to deal those issues and I'm really impressed with that. I think the boys here, the, I don't see many Nepalese boys, I think Nepalese boys should read this book because you will understand why the author thinks that Nepalese boys are very handsome. <laughs> I, I had no idea about it. Uh, I'm sure it, it, this idea might have come from Sen. Um, uh, I think uh, I think that this is a very interesting observation, which I, I had never noticed when I went to China. Uh, the book also talks about Nepal-China relations. The problems are there. What are the problems there? Uh, like what are the problems in Chinese uh, Nepal-China investment issues? I think the book is very useful for the Chinese businessmen. If they read it, they will understand that Nepal has a huge potential of tourism and hydropower. Because the author has been talking about the problems in hydropower sector. So I think the business, uh, Chinese businessmen will be very interested to invest in Nepal after reading this book. The less known issues for many of us uh, in Nepal, like I don't know, many of us do not know the complete history of Gorkha. The history of Gorkha, many of us are not aware. Many of us are not, do not know the meaning of Namaste. Many of you don't have good understanding of Rig Bay and all those issues, the ancient texts, which has been dealt here. So I'm really impressed by that and I really want to compliment all the authors for that. Uh, at the same time, I think uh, the book also, like there's lots of debate in Nepal that what is BRI and will Nepal benefit? The book says that Nepal will benefit from BRI. So these questions have been uh, discussed in the book. Uh, I think overall, the book give, even gives uh, the glimpse of Nepal-India relations, the, connectivity problems that Nepal have and what the reason behind all those poor connectivity in Nepal. So overall the book is a comprehensive guide to Nepal. I think those who want to visit Nepal must read it. Uh, other interesting things about the book is like the become Sambad. Many of us in Nepal do not know the history of become Sambad. Nepal have different calendar. You all are in Nepal so you all know that. And those things are really fascinating for the Chinese tourists, I think. The Chinese will be interested to know about that. And many of us in Nepal even don't know the historical uh, aspects of that. There are some interesting observations, like the book questions why Nepalese are so happy, why they are smiling all the time. And it is true, I mean, we had earthquake in 2015 and we have started smiling in 2016. Uh, devastating earthquake did not devastate us, we rose again. So that is the Brave, uh, the brave Gorkha's history are uh, collaborating in the book at the same time the nature of Nepalese people are there. And the book talks about four F of Nepalese being happy. It says the four F are food, friend, freedom and fancy. And if you want to know more about it, you should read the book. Uh, it also describes with great detail in a very positive way that Nepalese hospitality. I think the Chinese tourists are looking for that. So before they come, I think they will come with a great uh, imagination about Nepal and they think, I think they will enjoy it. The book talks about Kumari and many other issues. I think one thing that you, can, you could have added is the Kukur Tihar, which celebrates Dog's Day. People around the world, everyone loves dog and they are trying to imitate that. I think Nepal, the tourism industry, should all embassies should celebrate Kukur Tihar Day. Everyone around the world loves the dogs. We should have dogs, fashion festival, dogs, uh, race, all kinds of things. I think that's what the world needs to know. We all love dogs, but only Nepal are celebrating Dogs Day. Uh, there are a few things that uh, are there which are very interesting. Uh, other is like, there's an interesting observation that Nepalese can drink a lot, they can drink whole night, but they don't get drunk. <laughs> I, 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 I agree to that, because I, when, I, when I drink with Chinese friends, it, uh, I, I'm not a good drinker, I don't drink much, but uh, my drinking friends, when they invite me, they start getting drunk in half an hour. So I think the Chinese should experience that when they come to Nepal. Uh, that's a very interesting observation that I have not noticed and that, that I have not observed. Similarly, the author has given three Punch word for three major cities of Nepal, Kathmandu, Lumbini and Pokhara. 
The three words are dust, rain, and heat. Heat for Lumini, <laughs> rain for Pokhara, and dust for Kachmandu. And I think this is the reality. At the same time, this is for us Netflix to realize that how we can remove that, how we can improve. Obviously, rain we don't need to, heat we can't do that, but I think dust, I think we should control, I wish we work on that. Uh, there is also a discussion about Gorkha defeating Japanese. I'm sure the Chinese, when they read about Gorkha defeating Japanese, I think they will enjoy a lot. Uh, they also discuss about the Nepalese being employed in Afghanistan and working for the uh, people around there. The book even talks about minute and very rare, uh, very famous uh, uh, historical events of Nepal, such as the Royal Massacre, and the evolution of Saha dynasty and all, which many of the uh, foreign writers have not. I, I studied in India for almost 15 years, and I have not read any books on Nepal where they discuss all kind of things in such a comprehensive way. So I think it's a great, uh, it's, a, uh, it's a great book in that sense. Uh, there are few, there are few things that I, uh, since I'm an academician, I think I should uh, point out. Uh, one is that the book says that all the Madhesis are migrant of India, which is not true. I'm a Madhesi and I'm not a migrant from India. There are major cities in India, uh, in Nepal, like Janakpur, Biratnagar, and Simran Ganenar. Yes, because I know it's a, it's a more like an interview, so many people, even Nepal, are not aware. So. Not all Madhesis are migrant, many are migrant, but many are also indigenous Madhesis because Janakpur, Biratnagar, Shimrongar, there are many historical cities that have remained as cities even when Kathmandu were there or even maybe probably before Kathmandu. Similarly, the two major religions of Nepal, Buddhism and Hinduism, has a very strong links in those Madhesis districts. 